Hey everyone, we're back again, this time with another classic silent comedy featuring Harold Lloyd, the 1923 movie, Safety Last. Now at the train station in Great Bend, Harold, as played by Harold Lloyd of course, prepares to leave for the big city. Now he says goodbye to his mother and his fiance Mildred, Mildred Davis promising to send for her when he's made his fortune. Now fast forward several months and we find that he's living in an apartment with his friend, Limpy Bill, Bill Strother. Now instead of saving his money to help pay the bills like he should, Harold keeps spending it on jewelry that he sends to Mildred, along with letters bragging about how well he is doing. Now, in reality, he's just a sales clerk at the DeVore department store where he has to deal with some unruly customers as well as the very stuffy floor walker, Mr. Stubbs, Westcott B. Clark. Now, one day after leaving work to meet his friend Bill, Harold runs into an old friend from Great Bend who has become a policeman there. Now, after quickly talking with him, Harold meets up with Bill and bragging to him that the police will let him get away with anything, urges Bill to help him play a prank on the policeman. However, in, in the short period of time he'd left the policeman, somebody else came in, and so the uh, policeman that they play a prank on is not Harold's friend, but <laughs> somebody else. Harold is able to realize this quickly and hide before he's spied, but Bill isn't that lucky and has to run away and ends up climbing one of the nearby buildings to get away. Now the policeman, Noah Young, vows to arrest Bill the next time he sees him. Now more trouble comes for Harold with the big sale in the department store, with some very unruly customers getting him in trouble with Mr. Stubbs. Then Mildred arrives to surprise him, and boy is he surprised. Now he has to find a way to do both his job and also appear to be in a much higher position in the company. Now as he is trying to get Mildred to leave, he overhears the store's manager tell the floor walker that he would pay a lot of money to somebody who could come up with a gimmick to get more people in the store. Now remembering how his buddy climbed up a building, Harold bursts in and suggests an event in which a mystery man would climb the exterior of the department store. The manager likes the idea and decides to run with it. Harold calls Bill to tell him about and offers to split the money. However, the policeman that they had played a prank on shows up. And so Bill suggests that Harold should climb the first floor while uh, Bill tries to evade the policeman. Except that's not so easy as Harold has to keep climbing while the policeman continues to chase Bill. Of course, this movie's most well-known scene, and possibly Harold Lloyd's most famous from his entire career, is him climbing up the department store building, particularly when he is hanging onto the broken clock. Now, the whole idea was inspired by Bill Strothers, who did his own human fly act of climbing a building and doing other stumps at the top, something that Harold Lloyd saw walking when he was walking through Los Angeles. Now he quickly got Bill Struthers under contract at the Hal Roche studio for this film, playing his buddy Limpy Bill, and obviously doing his own climbing as well as doubling for Harold for some shots. Now I know I enjoy watching this whole scene unfold in the movie every time. Now just because of what life is like for me, it's rare for me to be able to watch an entire movie all in one sitting, at least outside of when I actually see movies in theaters or watch movies with friends. Neither of which is exactly happening now for very obvious reasons. But uh, because of all that, I can guarantee that whenever I get to this scene in the movie, I need to make sure I have enough time to save for the whole climb because I find it so gripping every time I watch it that I just cannot bring myself to leave until Harold is at the top of the building. Now the whole scene just manages to make you laugh even while keeping you on the edge of your seat. Of course, the rest of the movie is fun, too. I mean, I know I enjoy watching the whole scene where Harold is trying to do his job all while convincing his girlfriend that he's a big man at the department store. I love watching the reactions of some of his co-workers who are rendered speechless as he attempts to demonstrate how to do their jobs. 
Then the follow-up, obviously, is he tries to appear to be the general manager when Mildred makes that mistaken assumption. His methods of getting past his co-workers, not to mention the general manager when he returns to the office, are all hilarious. Just easily a lot of fun to see here. Now, I'll admit, while I was trying to plan when I would post this review, I had no thoughts or plans on connecting to Halloween, which obviously will be in less than a week from when this video is posted. Still, on thinking it over, I can't help but think that the movie is almost appropriate. I mean, we see Harold pretending to be something he isn't, especially with regards to his girlfriend for the entire movie. Now, he may not be wearing a literal mask, but he's still wearing one, fig a figurative one, just the same. And an idea that it uh, continues for the climb up the building, considering that all the press for the event keeps the identity of the climber a secret, and Harold is forced to step in when the cop looking for his buddy shows up. Now, of course, Harold and his buddy try to make plans to change outfits on a higher floor to keep up the ruse. Except, as I said before, Bill still can't evade the policeman. And as for thrills, well, Harold's climb up the building certainly provides them. They may not be the same as dealing with monsters or being stalked by serial killers or whatever other types of Halloween movies you can, you can think of. But I think it works well enough. Of course, regardless of what time of year you see this movie, it's still a great classic and one I have no trouble whatsoever recommending. Now this movie is available on Blu-ray and DVD from Criterion Collection and is 1 hour and 14 minutes in length. Well, that should be all I have to see on this one, everybody, so thanks for listening, and I hope you keep tuning in for more.